everyone, and welcome to our third episode of CU Faith Fridays, now in our second season. Today we have with us junior Prasani Shrestha. She's here to talk to us today about her faith and spirituality journey, both before college, but during college as well. So we're happy to have her with us today. So let's get started, um, Prasani, if you just want to introduce yourself and maybe tell us a little bit about who you are. Hi everyone, my name is Prasani Shrestha and I'm an international student from Nepal, currently studying here at Kolhul University. As Kolhul mentioned, I'm a junior and I'm currently pursuing biology and psychology here. And uh, I came from a Catholic high school back in Nepal. And uh, the reason that I decided to pursue my undergraduate degree here at Kolhul was that I noticed that it's a really well-lit community-based campus, and I really thought that it would reflect or more so add on to the values that I had carried from my high school. And yeah, some of the things that I enjoy doing apart from when I'm studying is I like dancing, I like listening to music, and I love learning about people, about cultural, ethnic, and lingual diversity around me. That's great. Um, so you said you're from Nepal, which is actually pretty huge. Um, so I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about what Nepal is like, but I'm also curious more about what your high school experience was like. What is high school like in Nepal? And um, what was it like uh, growing up there? What are some things that are important to you and your family and your culture that, uh, yeah, that were very present in your life? So, um, as I mentioned, I come from a Catholic high school back in Nepal. And before my high school, I did not really uh, exactly know the values and the upbringings that necessarily go into a religious institution. Um, I was not exactly well informed or well educated, but as I joined my high school, it was more of a, like a really close uh, community where they have, we had a really welcoming uh, community in a sense where all the faculty and students were really involved on campus and uh, the values are more geared towards um, having um, an identity, uh, having an individual identity as a part of the community or more so mm -hmm. as to give back to the community and values as such. And uh, I feel like I carry the same values that I have in my high school along to the college. Um, studying high school in Nepal was a really uh, amazing experience for me, especially the high school I attended was uh, very supportive of students, whatever initiative that they wanted to take. And of course, it was a little different from what it is here in terms of the education system and everything. But I'm really glad that I uh, attended the high school that I did back in Nepal. And yeah. That's great. That's great. That's awesome. Was um was the high school like did you um was it kind of like a boarding school high school? Did you live there or did you live at home with like your parents or your family and then go there during the day? So high school back in Nepal is uh they we don't really have like residential high schools okay. or residential school. It's more of like a school system, a day school system or some schools also have like uh, morning school systems where we just go and attend our classes and come back. So all in all, it's most like a commuting experience. And mm -hmm. yeah, uh, we most of the students or most of the uh, adolescents who are attending high school, uh, most of them live with their parents or their families back in Nepal. But some of them uh, do live in like private um, institutions which are like hosteling or residency. Uh, institutions that we have uh, in, inside the city or oh, something wow. like that. Cool. Great. Great. Um, so what's it like? I know you talked about um, a little bit of some of the similar values that you found in your high school and that you find here at Caldwell. But what was it like or what is it like being so far from home? And what are some of the reasons that you decided to study in the U.S. and specifically New Jersey or at Caldwell? What led you here? 
Um, so when I decided to uh, pursue my undergraduate degree, I really wanted to step out of my comfort zone. And I had never ever stayed away from my family, uh, let alone my own room. Like I basically grew up in that single room for my whole 18 years. And it was a really challenging as well as an exciting decision for me to leave my family, my country, coming like 8,000 miles away by, uh, away from home. And I, I must admit, it was, a, uh, it was a bit difficult for me. Um, it was an emotionally difficult process for me in the beginning, but Colwell being in its best, um, I noticed uh, when I was searching for my school, I noticed that it's, it is very rich in inclusion. Like I noticed the international diversity here um, and how it has established this sense of belongingness in campus. Um, I was aware of the student faculty sizes here, like how we, um, as, as I already mentioned, we have a well-knit um, network inside campus. And as uh, in my freshman semester itself, I started getting involved in uh, my in organizations or institutions clubs that rooted me back to my culture my ethnicity my faith like nepali student association international student organization and currently too i'm uh, working for the student government um, as the vp of internal affairs so all these experiences they kind of um, make me feel like home on campus um, besides my um, education or my major, I also, I'm also a part of, uh, as I mentioned, SGA. Also, I am involved as an alternate resident assistant in the residence life here on campus. And I'm also, as uh, I'm also, I'd also like to call myself like an interfaith enthusiast on campus because I'm really um, geared or interested towards learning about different diversity in terms of religion, ethnicity, spirituality, and such. That's great. That's awesome. That's awesome. And um, thank you for that. It was, uh, I think, just a good way to hear about all of the different things that you've gotten involved in. That's awesome that you came 8,000 miles from home and really just like dove in to getting involved in all of these things. And, you know, I can say this, and I, I think a lot of other staff and faculty would say this is, you know, your involvement, it just brings so much life to campus, especially during a time like right now, what we're all going through, you know? Um, I know I'm working with you on the anti-racism lecture series, and uh, yeah, I just know that you're involved in so many things, and so that that just really means a lot to this campus, so. Um, you you kind of ended talking about the interfaith thing, so, uh, so let's kind of start with Faith a little bit. So what would you say are ways that you've practiced or that you practice your faith? And how have you been involved in like faith activities over the years? What does that mean to you? Um, so before mentioning the ways that I'm involved right now, I'd just like to give a brief uh, background of how it was back in Nepal. So uh, being back in Nepal, uh, we, we had a lot of practices and traditions and festivals and all. And I was not that curious about everything back home as much as I am now here. Um, it's more like I'm in a journey of finding myself and finding my values and belief as I found my independence after coming here. So that geared me more towards my faith and my spirituality. And it is also very great source of emotional support for me, my faith and my spirituality. Like, um, I really find peace in chanting prayers. I really find peace in uh, listening to podcasts related to faith and spirituality. I absolutely enjoyed uh, talking to my parents and my grandparents and my relatives back home, especially during the time of pandemic. I was really trying to connect with my family, um, also in a sense of knowing more about my faith um, that was rooted back home. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, uh, essentially, my family practices Buddhism and Hinduism, both. So they have passed uh, both the values and uh, the essence of uh, traditions of both these religions to me. So I really feel grateful towards my family and uh, my community, I guess, because it has helped me here after I came to Colville. 
That's great. Oh, I love that. I love that. Um, so what would you say you get out of your faith? Um, like, why is it important for you to have faith? Um, I know in the last question, you kind of started to mention some of the things like, I think, especially connecting generationally with your family is like a huge thing. Uh, but what are some of the other things that you get out of your faith and spirituality? Like, why have that? Um, so if I would have to summarize, in a sense, it would be like my faith and my spirituality is a very huge factor or an integral part of how I identify or how I express myself, how I um, find uh, peace in a sense, how I, um, how I feel it is easier to connect to other people in a sense. So I know in one of the previous questions, you mentioned um, being involved in an interfaith group on campus. Now that's fairly new for people who might not know that. And so I'd love if you would talk a little bit about how the interfaith group came to be on campus. What, what are some of the things that you guys do? Um, who are, who's involved in it? Uh, yeah, anything like that, that our viewers could learn just a little bit more about this group. Sure. Um, so um, I think I've mentioned before too, but I'm really interested in knowing about diversity in general, cultural diversity, and in a sense, having this uh, multicultural interactions on campus. So as uh, some of the students and some of the professors, we're brainstorming through how we could have a more um, inclusive space on campus, we came up with this idea of having an interfaith uh, club or an interfaith platform on campus where students could uh, have education, properly informed education about different faiths, have um, more knowledge on spirituality and why, it, uh, how uh, it is so important and why respecting each other's faith is so important, why having a empathetic environment by having a compassionate environment where we not only tolerate, but um, where we embrace each other's faith and beliefs is so important on campus. So in a venture of doing that, we wanted to have a strong body on campus, which could root towards uh, these topics, which could gear towards these topics. Yeah. So that's how we came up with the idea of interfaith. And we're really excited because we're opening up a new club Heads up to all the students who are watching this. If you're really interested in joining the Interfaith Club and diversity is something you are interested towards, you can always inform us through Colleen Campus Ministry or you can personally email. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I love that. Um, I know one of the things that um, I can't remember if you had mentioned it here or that it was from another time, but you talked about like the, the different ways that different religions intersect. And I think that that's so important when we think about um, interfaith and like being a part of interfaith groups, because it's not, I mean, we live in a world that is so incredibly troubled <laughs> right now. And there is so much benefit to having the beauty of every religion and spirituality be uplifted at a time like this. And so, you know, maybe people are wondering like, oh, well, we're a Dominican Catholic school. So what does that really mean of like, what does interfaith really mean here? Well, I think it's so important to remember that like our Catholic faith can be enriched in so many ways by other spiritual tr traditions, other religious traditions, all of that. Like, I, when you were talking about your family and like Hinduism, I was thinking back to one of my favorite classes I was able to take when I was in college was Hinduism. So it was an entire class on Hinduism. And, you know, we um, did a variety of things. We had to go to, um, is it a temple? Yes, yeah, so we had to go to a temple. Um, we had to like find one in the area and like go ourselves. And it was a really poignant experience. And I learned a lot about. I think just like what it means to like meditate and like sit in silence with, for me, it was God, you know? Um, and so, yeah, so I think back to that a lot and just the realization that all of these different religions, like they can intersect in so many ways and we just have to have our hearts open to that, I think. 
Um, so that's great. I love this group that you guys are starting on campus and um, hopefully it can really be like a movement here and people will really feel connected to that. So that's beautiful. Um, so I guess when you think about uh, your time that you've been at Caldwell, um, how would you say that you've grown in your faith and spirituality? Um, and what, what do you find that you do for prayer? especially maybe during COVID and quarantine. <laughs> but how have you grown in your faith and spirituality and what what kind of prayer techniques or types attract you? Um, sure. So um, faith and spirituality has uh, definitely been one of the important aspects that has grown with me uh, during this journey uh, since my freshman year to my junior year. Um, I have learned to have meaningful conversations with people, not only regarding uh, a religious or spiritual diversity, or just being, um, just having a, a open mindset, I guess I would term that way, regarding any kind of diversity or regarding any kind of uh, beliefs that people have. Uh, you might not agree with each other, but we can always work towards having a better or a safe and inclusive environment on campus. Like you mentioned about intersectionality, um, it is very important to uh, understand that it's not like a segregation, but it's like a better together um, idea where all of us can work together, whether it be uh, talking about different pressing social issues or whether it be organizing events that make people feel inclusive on campus. So in a sense, um, uh, while being involved on campus, um, I have also, um, I guess, found more pleasure in sharing ideas regarding faith and spirituality. Another way I, uh, I would like to connect to my faith and spirituality is also music and dances. Um, I have uh, been geared towards the religious dances uh, and um, not only dancing, but I've also started to learn about their uh, values. Like, why is it that uh, movements are such an important part of expression and how does it uh, reflect towards the uh, faith learnings or religious learnings? Uh, one thing that I really found helpful during this COVID pandemic was chanting prayers or um, doing meditations while uh, having a uh, Buddhist uh, chanting prayer playing on my phone. Like uh, we have these vibrational prayers that really helps uh, uh, people when they're meditating and stuff. So as you can see in my background, I have this prayer flags that mean mm -hmm. different symbols of um, Buddhist religion. So uh, as I uh, learned more uh, when having conversations with friends and family, I also tried different techniques, uh, also re relating also like listening to music, prayers and stuff. That's great. Those are beautiful prayer techniques. Um, I know I, I saw your flags in the background and um, I used to have um, prayer flags. I think they're probably at my house, so I should look for them and bring them in. So I love that. Well, I guess just to wrap up, is there anything else you would like to share with um, our viewers and those who are watching? Sure. Um, first of all, I, I really want to thank you, Pauline and Campus Ministry for just giving me uh, this platform to talk about my faith, spirituality, and just my journey here on Colville, which has been absolutely amazing. I have met some amazing friends, amazing faculty, amazing professors, and it has just, just been a really good growth process for me here at Colville. Um, and to wrap it up, I'd just like to wish everyone around the world to be safe and healthy keep practicing social distancing, keep wearing the mask, and let's just uh, never, uh, let's just keep stirring our spirits. Uh, however, it is helpful for uh, us or for you, whether it be having prayers, whether it be having uh, phone calls with your family, whether it be reading books, however it works for you, let's keep stirring our spirits and not let it die. Also, um, one thing I really like to promote is let's be mindful of each other, especially during hard times, because you really don't know what other people might be going through. 
So yeah, mm -hmm. let's keep on building a, a, an empathetic and compassionate environment around us. Thank you so much. Well, beautiful closing words. I could not have said it better myself. So <laughs> we're just going to end with that. I love it. So we just want to thank you all for joining us today, for listening in um, to the interview, to all the things that Prasani had to say. And uh, we hope that you gain something from it. We hope that you are able to move forward and stir your spirit as she closed with. Um, during these times. So tune in next week. We'll have a new guest for our CU Faith Fridays. Thank you.